The Beverly Hillbillies was a beloved family sitcom that ran from 1962 to 1971. The show's theme song sums it up perfectly. A family of southern mountain folk strikes oil on their property, thus making them rich. They take their newfound money and move to Beverly Hills, California. In their new home, antics ensue as they do not fit in with the rest of the neighborhood's high society residents. However, the passage of over half a decade during which the Beverly Hillbillies aired, the world has lost most of the stars of the show who brought these lovable characters to life. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the contributions of each member of the Beverly Hillbillies cast, as well as the way each cast member eventually died. And are any Beverly Hillbillies cast members still alive? Let's find out. The Beverly Hillbillies a story about a man named Jed. In the fall of 1962, American television screens were illuminated with a fresh kind of comedy, challenging our perceptions of wealth and poverty, urban and rural life, and sophistication versus simplicity. The Beverly Hillbillies, true to its name, cleverly juxtaposed two worlds seldom seen together in popular entertainment. At the heart of the show was the Clampett family, far from typical protagonists. They lived a peaceful life in their mountain cabin, unnoticed until they stumbled upon a fortune in oil. Suddenly wealthy, they relocated to a luxurious mansion in Beverly Hills, California. Picture the humor when a family accustomed to chasing critters and whittling wood is thrust into high society's epicenter. The Clampett's adjustment to their new surroundings was anything but smooth leading to comedic encounters with their stylish neighbors. Granny's confusion, mistaking a pool for a cement pond, or Jethro's attempts at education, provided endless laughs, all while conveying deeper messages beneath the surface. At its essence, the Beverly Hillbillies wasn't just a tale of a rural family adjusting to newfound wealth. It delved into the mishaps and misunderstandings they encountered while trying to fit into a society that initially looked down on them. While the Clampets were initially seen as uncultured by their upscale neighbors, their genuine demeanor, strong family bonds, and morale integrity gradually won people over. In their own unintentional way, they imparted valuable lessons about kindness, honesty, and the beauty of a simpler life. To the residents of Beverly Hills. This theme of not judging individuals based on superficial factors like background or education struck a chord with viewers. The show not only elicited laughter, but also offered a reflection of a society prone to making snap judgments. Interestingly, Jed Clampett, despite his lack of sophistication, often emerged as the wisest character, cutting through the facade of Beverly Hills' elite with his insightful observations. Another delightful aspect of the show was its portrayal of the Clampets without resorting to making them the constant punchline of jokes. Despite their eccentricities, the humor never felt mean-spirited or belittling. Instead, it celebrated their individuality, their steadfast sense of self, and their ability to remain unswayed by the luxurious lifestyle surrounding them. The impact of the Beverly Hillbillies on its audience was undeniable. At a time when most sitcoms focused on urban settings and city-centric issues, this show was like a breath of fresh air from the mountains. It served as a reminder of values often overlooked in the pursuit of success, the simplicity of life, the importance of family bonds, and the wisdom found in unexpected places. Throughout its nine-season run, these messages infused with humor became integral to the show's appeal. By the time The Beverly Hillbillies wrapped up in 1971, it had made a lasting impression on American television. It wasn't merely a sitcom. It served as a commentary, a reflection, and, above all, a celebration of the rich tapestry of the human experience. The Clampets, with their unapologetic hillbilly demeanor, had endeared themselves to countless households, showcasing the beauty found in the diversity of cultural clashes. Irene Ryan Irene Ryan is perhaps best remembered for her iconic portrayal of Granny in the beloved TV series The Beverly Hillbillies. 
Her portrayal of the feisty matriarch earned her two Emmy Award nominations for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Comedy Series. However, her talent extended far beyond her role in the sitcom, encompassing a diverse array of performances across Broadway, vaudeville, film, television, and radio. Ryan's journey in the entertainment industry began at a remarkably young age. At just 11 years old, she won a singing contest, marking the start of her remarkable career. By the time she reached 20, she was already performing in vaudeville alongside her husband, showcasing her versatile talents to audiences across the country. As she continued to hone her craft, she gradually transitioned into roles in film and television, where her charisma and skill captivated audiences. Despite her success, Ryan battled a severe smoking habit throughout her life, a detail that was often remarked upon by her peers. Her castmate Max Baer Jr. once commented on her penchant for cigarettes, humorously noting that she smoked like a chimney during interviews. Tragedy struck in 1973 while Ryan was performing in a stage production of Pippin. She suffered a stroke during the performance, leading to her hospitalization. It was during this hospitalization that doctors made a devastating discovery. Ryan had a malignant brain tumor. Sadly, she passed away on April 26, 1973, at the age of 70, leaving behind a legacy of talent and charm. Her untimely death deeply saddened her former castmates from the Beverly Hillbillies and fans alike, marking the end of an era in television history. Irene Ryan's contributions to entertainment, both on and off screen, continue to be remembered and celebrated by audiences around the world. Buddy Ebsen In the world of classic television, few characters evoke the same heartwarming simplicity and profound wisdom as Jed Clampett, the amiable patriarch of the Clampett family. Jed's towering presence isn't just due to his physical stature, it's the authenticity that Buddy Ebsen brought to the role that truly stands out. Yet Ebsen's journey to embodying Jed is marked by serendipitous twists and turns. The story of how Buddy Ebsen nearly missed out on the iconic role feels like something out of fiction. Initially, Jed Clampett wasn't intended for him. He wasn't even the first choice. Despite several well-known names being considered, a series of coincidences and strokes of destiny prompted the producers to reconsider. When the role eventually landed in Ebsen's lap, he wasn't immediately convinced. However, like any seasoned actor, he saw the potential in Paul Henning's creation and committed to breathing life into Jed Clampett. Right from the start, Ebsen's dedication to authenticity was clear. He aimed to portray Jed not merely as a wealthy hillbilly, but as a compassionate father, a sage figure, and a gentle soul navigating the unfamiliar terrain of Beverly Hills with grace. Buddy Ebsen delved deep into his wealth of life experiences, often drawing from his upbringing during the Great Depression to add authenticity to Jed's character. His portrayal of Jed was not a caricature, but rather a tribute to the hard-working individuals he had encountered in his youth. However, the Beverly Hillbillies was just one remarkable chapter in Buddy Ebsen's extensive career. Even before Jed, he had already made a name for himself. Ebsen's dancing prowess, in particular, was legendary, with many recalling his performances alongside the iconic Shirley Temple in 1930s movies. Interestingly, his initial shot at stardom was meant to be as the Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz. Unfortunately, a severe allergic reaction to the aluminum powder makeup intended for the character nearly proved fatal and led to his replacement. Apart from his silver screen success, Ebsen boasted a diverse range of television roles. Following the Beverly Hillbillies, he smoothly transitioned into the lead role in Barnaby Jones, a detective series that showcased his versatility as an actor. No longer confined to the role of a naive hillbilly, he emerged as a sharp-witted, perceptive detective, endearing himself to audiences. In his personal life, Buddy Ebsen was a polymath of sorts. Beyond acting, he explored various pursuits, such as writing, sailing, and maintaining a strong commitment to his family. As his Hollywood career gradually wound down, 
Ebsen found solace in simpler pleasures, indulging in painting and sculpture, allowing his creativity to flow in diverse directions. Buddy Ebsen's departure from this world mirrored the serene and graceful life he lived. On July 6, 2003, at the age of 95, he bid farewell. Ebsen left behind a legacy that resonated across multiple generations, embodying the belief that the depth of one's life matters more than its length. Reflecting on his remarkable journey, one cannot help but marvel at the diverse roles he undertook. From a talented dancing prodigy to the beloved patriarch of the Clampet clan, from a sharp-eyed detective to a tranquil artist, Ebsen's cinematic journey was truly remarkable. Much like Jed Clampett, Ebsen left an enduring impression on those he encountered, reminding us of life's simple joys and profound wisdom found in its most unassuming moments. Nancy Culp Nancy Culp's journey is a remarkable tale of breaking norms and venturing into uncharted territories, from the world of journalism to the glitz and glamour of Hollywood and eventually into the realm of politics. Her life serves as a testament to her adaptability, resilience, and the relentless pursuit of new horizons. Even before gracing the silver screen, Nancy had already established herself as a formidable force in the field of journalism. Starting her professional career as a writer for the Miami Beach Tropics, she demonstrated a keen intellect and a knack for storytelling. It seemed like journalism was her destined path. However, destiny had different plans in store for her. Nancy's transition to Hollywood marked a significant turning point in her life. Despite facing initial challenges and being overshadowed by more prominent names in the industry, her perseverance remained unshakable. It was her portrayal of Miss Jane Hathaway in The Beverly Hillbillies that thrust her into the spotlight and propelled her to fame. Miss Hathaway, the efficient and somewhat lovelorn secretary to banker Milburn Drysdale, quickly became a beloved character among audiences. Nancy Culp's flawless comedic timing and distinctive presence made Miss Hathaway a household name. Through her portrayal, Culp added layers to the character's personality initially perceived as a stern secretary, but evolving into a nuanced figure as the series unfolded. She skillfully depicted Miss Hathaway's vulnerabilities, her fondness for Jethro, and her ongoing efforts to bridge the cultural gap between the Clampets and the sophisticated world of Beverly Hills. Culp's performance in this role showcased her finesse and talent, earning her widespread acclaim. However, Hollywood was just one chapter in Nancy Culp's multifaceted life. Following her time on the Beverly Hillbillies, she ventured into the realm of politics, driven by a desire for change. Harnessing the recognition she gained from her acting career, Culp embarked on a political journey, running as a Democrat for the U.S. House of Representatives in Pennsylvania in 1984. Although her candidacy was met with unexpected opposition from her former co-star, Buddy Ebsen. Despite her efforts, Culp ultimately lost the race and decided to retire to Palm Springs, where she dedicated herself to various charitable endeavors. Tragically, Culp's life took a somber turn when she was diagnosed with cancer in 1990. Despite her brave battle against the disease, she passed away on February 3, 1991, at the age of 69. As time has passed since the heyday of the Beverly Hillbillies, many of its beloved cast members have regrettably passed away. However, there is one notable exception, a cast member who remains alive to this day. Stick around as we uncover which member of the Beverly Hillbillies cast continues to grace us with their presence, Donna Douglas. In the Beverly Hillbillies universe, Donna Douglas truly brought Ellie Mae Clampett to life, portraying her as the radiant and animal-loving daughter of Jed Clampett. Sporting her iconic pigtails, exuding tomboy charm, and speaking with an infectious southern twang, Ellie May epitomized the gentle spirit of the hills, even amidst the glitz and glamour of Beverly Hills. However, while Douglas is most famously known for her portrayal of Ellie May, her life was far from one-dimensional. She embarked on her entertainment journey by winning beauty pageants in her native Louisiana offering an early glimpse of the charisma and talent that would define her career. Upon relocating to New York, Douglas delved into modeling, 
and appeared in numerous television commercials, honing her skills and expanding her portfolio along the way. Douglas made her breakthrough in Hollywood with appearances on shows like The Twilight Zone before securing her defining role on The Beverly Hillbillies. As Ellie May, Donna discovered a character that deeply resonated with audiences. Her portrayal skillfully balanced the comedy and sentimentality of the series, infusing it with genuine warmth that endeared Ellie May to viewers as more than just a comedic sidekick. Ellie May's love for animals mirrored Douglas's own affection, showcasing a softer side of the Clampett family. Outside of the glitz and glam of Hollywood, Douglas nurtured other passions, including her profound love for gospel music. She poured her melodic voice into numerous gospel albums, blending her southern roots with her spiritual beliefs. For Donna, gospel wasn't merely a musical genre. It served as an expression of her faith and reflected her personal journey with spirituality. Donna Douglas passed away in 2015 from pancreatic cancer, leaving behind an enduring legacy. To many, she will forever be remembered as the vibrant Ellie May, who graced the screen with her charm and wit. Yet, for those who delved deeper into her life, Douglas was much more than just a character. She was a symbol of versatility, embodying roles as an actress, singer, author, and a source of hope in her battle against cancer. Douglas's life exemplified the power of perseverance, faith, and an unwavering spirit. Her journey serves as a testament to her courage, as she fearlessly tackled challenges and embraced new opportunities throughout her life. She epitomized Southern grace and Hollywood charm, while maintaining an indomitable spirit that inspired many. From her humble beginnings in the bayous of Louisiana, to her adventures in the glitzy world of Beverly Hills and beyond, Donna Douglas's story continues to inspire us all. It reminds us of the limitless potential within each of us, waiting to be discovered and realized. Raymond Bailey In the colorful tapestry of characters that populate the Beverly Hillbillies, Raymond Bailey's portrayal of Mr. Milburn Drysdale truly shines. As the money-obsessed yet hilariously comical banker, Drysdale serves as a crucial contrast to the innocent Clampett family, highlighting the stark differences between the sophisticated Beverly Hills world and the humble hill country life. However, beneath Drysdale's impeccably tailored suit and his relentless pursuit of wealth, Raymond Bailey infuses the character with depth, nuance, and warmth. This adds layers to Drysdale's persona, securing his position among the most memorable figures in television history. While bankers are often depicted as stiff and business-minded individuals, Bailey's portrayal of Drysdale transcends these stereotypes. Despite his constant efforts to manage the Clampett's newfound fortune, Drysdale reveals glimpses of genuine affection for the eccentric family, albeit in his own unique manner. Raymond Bailey's exceptional comedic timing and his skillful balance between exaggerated humor and subtle warmth were instrumental in shaping the multidimensional character of Mr. Drysdale. His on-screen interactions, particularly with Jane Hathaway portrayed by Nancy Culp, were comedic gems. The contrast between the overly serious banker and his steadfast yet often exasperated secretary was nothing short of brilliant with Bailey delivering his role flawlessly. Off-camera, Bailey's rapport with the cast members was noteworthy. Despite the differences in their on-screen personas, the actors shared a deep mutual respect and affection for one another. Anecdotes from the set often highlight Bailey's nurturing demeanor as he offered guidance and valuable advice to younger actors, drawing from his wealth of experience in the industry. The contrast between Raymond Bailey's genuine warmth off-screen and the greediness he portrayed as Mr. Drysdale on-screen depicted an actor deeply committed to his craft while remaining true to his humanity. When Raymond Bailey passed away in 1980, the world didn't just lose a remarkable actor. It lost a man of integrity, character, and immense talent. His depiction of Mr. Drysdale remains a cornerstone of television history showcasing a mastery of comedic acting. Through his dedication to his role, 
Bailey demonstrated that even characters intended for humor can possess layers, depth, and a sense of humanity. In reflecting on Raymond Bailey's legacy, we are reminded of life's dualities, the moments of joy and sorrow, the personas we present to the world, and our true selves behind the scenes, the triumphs, and the challenges. Bailey's life and career serve as a testament to resilience, the transformative power of talent, and the enduring spirit of an actor who poured his heart into every role, both on and off the screen. Harriet McGibbon Before stepping into the world of the Beverly Hillbillies, Harriet McGibbon had already established herself as a versatile performer with a rich background in the arts. Her journey began on the stages of Broadway, where she showcased her talent in various productions, captivating audiences with her commanding presence and impeccable performances. Beyond the confines of New York City, McGibbon's theatrical prowess shone in regional productions across the country, earning her acclaim and admiration from theater enthusiasts far and wide. However, McGibbon's artistic endeavors were not confined to the stage alone. She was a multi-talented individual who delved into different facets of the arts, including music. Notably, she pursued the harp and received instruction from a distinguished member of the Boston Symphony Orchestra, honing her skills and adding depth to her artistic repertoire. Additionally, her talents extended to the realm of radio, where she portrayed the character Lucy Kent in the popular soap opera Home Sweet Home, showcasing her versatility and adaptability as a performer. Throughout her career, McGibbon became known for her ability to embody characters of high society, often portraying snobbish or busybody personas with flair and precision. Her versatility allowed her to make guest appearances on various television shows, including Bewitched and My Three Sons, where she left a lasting impression with her memorable performances. However, it was her role as the status-obsessed wife of Milburn Drysdale in The Beverly Hillbillies that truly solidified her place in television history. Despite her character's penchant for elitism and social climbing, McGibbon infused the role with depth and nuance, earning the admiration of audiences and critics alike. Outside of her illustrious career in entertainment, McGibbon had a rich familial heritage with a notable connection to history. Her great-grandfather, Dr. Eliezer Deming, played a pivotal role as an Indiana abolitionist and was recognized by the Ohio Historical Society as a prominent agent of the Underground Railroad. This legacy of activism and courage added another layer of significance to McGibbon's family history, highlighting the depth of character that ran through generations of her lineage. Despite her passing on February 8, 1987, in Beverly Hills, Harriet McGibbon's legacy endures through her contributions to the arts and her remarkable family heritage. Her talents, her accomplishments, and her connection to history serve as a testament to the indelible impact she left on the world around her. Bea Benadere Before taking on the role of Jed's cousin Pearl in the Beverly Hillbillies, Bea Benadere had already established herself as a prominent figure in the entertainment industry. Her journey began in the realm of radio and voice acting, where she garnered recognition for her portrayal of characters like Betty Rubble on the beloved animated series, The Flintstones. A close friend of the Beverly Hillbillies creator, Paul Henning, Benedorette played a crucial role in shaping the casting decisions for the show. Initially auditioning for the role of Granny, she played a pivotal role in Irene Ryan's selection for the character recognizing Ryan's talent and suitability for the role. Moreover, Benadaret advocated for Harriet McGibbon to portray Margaret Drysdale, showcasing her keen eye for casting. In 1963, Henning crafted the show Petticoat Junction, specifically as a vehicle for Benadaret's talents, leading to her departure from the Beverly Hillbillies. However, tragedy struck during the filming of Petticoat Junction when Benadaret received a diagnosis of lung cancer. Sadly, she passed away on October 13, 1968, leaving behind a legacy of remarkable performances and contributions to the entertainment industry. The loss was compounded by the sudden death of her husband, Eugene Twombly, 
a skilled sound effects artist who passed away from a heart attack the day after her funeral. The double tragedy cast a somber shadow over the entertainment world as colleagues and fans mourned the loss of two talented individuals whose contributions had left an indelible mark on the industry. Max Baer Jr. Some roles seemed tailor-made for actors, and Max Baer Jr. found his perfect fit in the character of Jethro Bodine on The Beverly Hillbillies. As the lovably naive nephew of Jed Clampett, Bear infused Jethro with such natural charm that it's difficult to envision anyone else in the role. While the show skyrocketed to fame, propelling its stars into the limelight, Jethro posed both blessings and challenges for Bear. Jethro's character, with his innocent demeanor and boundless energy, offered a refreshing dose of comic relief for viewers. Bear's portrayal struck a chord with audiences not just for its humor, but also for the genuine warmth and authenticity he brought to the role. Throughout the series, Jethro's various career aspirations, from aspiring rock star to wannabe spy, provided some of its most memorable moments. Bear's ability to navigate Jethro's ever-changing ambitions while maintaining his inherent innocence showcased his versatility as an actor. However, like many actors deeply entrenched in their roles, Bear found himself closely associated with Jethro long after the Beverly Hillbillies came to an end. This phenomenon is a common occurrence in Hollywood, where an actor becomes so synonymous with a particular character that audiences struggle to see them in any other light. Despite Bear's considerable talent and versatility, he faced the challenge of being pigeonholed by his portrayal of the beloved Jethro. This typecasting presented obstacles, limiting the range of roles offered to him and overshadowing his diverse accomplishments in the industry. Nevertheless, Bauer refused to be discouraged by the constraints of typecasting. Instead, he embraced opportunities beyond acting. His endeavors after the Beverly Hillbillies were marked by innovation and sharp business acumen. Bauer delved into screenwriting, producing, and even directing, showcasing his talents behind the scenes and demonstrating a nuanced understanding of the film industry. One of his most intriguing business ventures was his ambition to establish a chain of Beverly Hillbillies-themed casinos. While this grand vision never fully materialized, the concept itself showcased Bear's talent for identifying opportunities in unconventional places blending his Hollywood background with a forward-thinking approach to business. He ventured into other roles and behind-the-scenes work, including writing, producing, and directing low-budget films like 1974's Macon County Line. Remarkably, this film achieved considerable success, earning $35 million on a modest budget of around $225,000. Bayer Jr. credited its triumph with saving him from potential financial struggles, joking that he would have had to resort to selling products door to door if the film hadn't performed well. Bayer Jr.'s family legacy extended to the big screen as he was portrayed by Craig Birko in the 2005 film Cinderella Man. Although the movie primarily focuses on the remarkable tale of boxer James J. Braddock, who faces off against Bear Sr. in the film. In the annals of television history, Jethro Bodine will forever remain an iconic character, and Max Baer Jr.'s portrayal will continue to be revered. However, beyond the laughter and the unforgettable scenes lies the narrative of an actor who, confronted with the unique challenges of overwhelming success, opted to innovate, adapt, and forge ahead. Max Baer Jr.'s transition from the screens of the Beverly Hillbillies to the corporate realm is a testament to the enduring resilience of an artist, the capacity for adaptation, and the unwavering optimism for a brighter future. Max Baer Jr. remains the last living link to the iconic sitcom. Baer Jr. brought Jethro to life with such authenticity that the character became ingrained in the memories of fans worldwide. Despite his initial lack of experience in acting, Bear Jr. stumbled into the role by accident, propelled by a stroke of luck and his sheer determination. Reflecting on the loss of his former castmates, 
Bear Jr. remarked, I'm the last man standing. All the actors, producers, everybody on the show is gone. At 86 years old as of 2024, Bear Jr. continues to cherish the memories of his overnight success and the enduring legacy of the Beverly Hillbillies. His portrayal of Jethro Bodine remains a testament to his talent and the timeless appeal of the beloved sitcom. As we reflect on the incredible journey of each cast member of the Beverly Hillbillies and the legacies they left behind, we invite you to share your thoughts in the comments below. Which cast member's story resonated with you the most, and why? Don't forget to like and subscribe for more fascinating content delving into the lives and legacies of iconic television personalities. See you next time.